Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, we've had a wee bit of a break uh, from the evening reflections the past few weeks, so it's good to be back on track and to be able to to chat to you at the end of a, another Lord's Day. I hope everything's well with you and yours and that we're continuing to hang on in faith through all the challenges that we come up against in our daily lives and in the, the life of the world at this time. But to be together in this way is to acknowledge that the presence of God is with us and that his good purpose is being worked out, however mysterious that might seem to us at times. But I'm glad that you're, you're with us tonight. And I hope that you'll benefit from the thoughts that I have to share with you. Well, let's begin with a time of silence and moving into to prayer. Let's pray. God, our Father, we come to you as the still centre of our lives in the midst of personal anxiety, in the midst of national upheaval, in the midst of so many horrifying events that are happening in the world at large, it's good for us to pause in the midst of it all, to know that you are with us and to know that you are the God who is revealed in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. A God who is with us, a God who renews us, a God who reaches forward into eternity to prepare a place for all his faithful people. So we pray that you'll stay with us now, guide our thoughts, enable us to gather all the resources that we need to be faithful in our time. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, there have been some pretty high quality dramas on television. Recently, over the summer months, I'm sure you've watched one or two. I know that, that we have here in the, the Mans. But nothing really compares to the drama that's been focused on 10 Downing Street in the last week. Keeping track of all the twists and turns and waiting for certain outcomes has been quite uh, riveting and at some level. At the point of my speaking tonight, there seems to be some resolution, which I'm sure we're all grateful for. But watching all this unfolding has reminded me of a quotation, which has been floating around for some time now. And it has to do with the ultimate end of a political career. Someone once said that the end of all political careers is failure because that's the nature of politics and that's also the nature of, of human life. It might seem like a, a pretty dismal thing to say, but I think it's, it's good for us to take it on board and perhaps to realise some of the limitations that are necessarily part of political life in our nation and in other nations. And it's not something new to be speaking like this because down through the millennia, people have been conscious of the limitations on the power of politics actually to, to change human nature and to change our quality of life to the deepest level. I'm going to read to you from one of the Psalms. It's Psalm 146, where the psalmist says, Do not put your trust in princes, in mortal men who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Now, I don't think this is here to denigrate those who exercise political power, but it is handing out a warning to us that 
these people are not perfect. They're limited in the same ways that we ourselves are limited. And therefore, we need to be careful about putting too much of our trust in them. That's not to say that there aren't a lot of good people involved in, in political life. Of course there are. And if we are to change society for the better, if, there are, if there's to be a greater level of, of justice and equality, if people are to be provided for, especially when they're in a vulnerable state, then we need people pulling the, the levers of political life and taking us in the right direction. The warning is that we put too much of our trust in them and perhaps expect too much. And that's why, you know, time and time again in the letters of the apostles, we find this command really laid upon us that we should pray for, for those who hold political power in the country. Because every good thing comes from God. Political power and authority comes from God. And those who exercise it have a responsibility and they will be answerable to God as to how they've used their political power. So they need our prayers and we need they need also our support as they seek to bring greater justice, greater equality, greater stability to our society. What the psalmist is telling us here is just be careful that you're not putting too much of your trust in these people. In so many ways, they're just like us. They're limited in, in their time and their energy. In, in the scope of their, their actions and they need to be supported with the prayers of God's people. I think what the psalmist is really calling for here is perspective on the princes, those who hold authority in any country. And the first thing that, that he holds out as a warning to us is that they can't save. However well-intentioned they, they might be, however godly they, they might be, remember that they are men and women and they cannot save. He makes it quite clear here in our passage when he says, don't put your trust in princes and mortal men who cannot save. Now, it may be that all political careers end in failure, but that doesn't mean to say that there can't be a lot of good that is done along the way. And of course that is the case. People have made changes to our society and to other societies in, in the world that have made a real difference to the quality of life in that country. There's no doubt about that. But Jesus in the New Testament speaks of a more radical change, which only his Holy Spirit can bring about. And that's a complete change in human personality. Jesus said it was like someone becoming born again. There, there is a radical change, which is not just about laws. It, it, it's not just about different standards in, in, in society. It's about the personality being turned towards God and the Holy Spirit of God making a difference in a person's life. That is, is, that is Jesus' vision of being saved. And it's something that no man or no woman can do for us. It's something that we have to be open to from above. So be careful. Remember that the powers that be, however well-intentioned and however noble their aims, they cannot save. 
and they don't endure. That's another thing that comes through in those verses in the Psalms. You know, the, the Psalmist refers to the princes as being mortal. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. I was just trying to uh, trying to work out how many prime ministers there had been in my lifetime. And it's actually 14. There have been 14 prime ministers. Uh, Harold Wilson actually had two shots uh, at it. So but he still just counts as, as one. Quite a thought, actually, that when I was born, uh, the prime minister was Sir Winston Churchill. So it's amazing how the how the years just uh, flutter by. But they come and go. That's the point that I want to make here. They come and go, and they are limited. They are mortal people in the same way that we are. They have the same limitations, and they can only do too much. Uh, they can only achieve too much. There are uh, there are limits placed upon their abilities and, and their strength. And we have to place that alongside the vision of God that we have in Scripture. He, time and time again, he, he's referred to as the eternal God, the God who existed before all things, the God who will exist at the end of all things. I was just reflecting on a verse from the book of Deuteronomy, the words of Moses, when I was getting ready for a, a funeral recently. Um, great words which Moses shared with his people before he, he died. He said to the, the tribes of, of Israel, the eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. The eternal God the God who's not limited and in his limitlessness, he is our refuge. He is our loving God whose love for us can never be in any way undermined by any circumstance. So they don't endure our politicians, even if sometimes their legacy does go on for a long time. It's our God who endures and his everlasting arms that sustain us and take us forward into the unknown future. So be careful how you look at the princes, says the psalmist. They can't save, they don't endure, and they're unfulfilled in, in the end. I think that's going back to to that quotation about all political life ending in, in failure. Um, this is really what we're, we're talking about here. And the, the, the psalmist, again, makes it quite clear in his words when he says, when their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Their plans come to nothing. I think it's fair to say, and I think most politicians would, would, would agree, actually, that they come to the end of their tenure in a particular office, they come to the end of their careers, and can they honestly say that they have achieved everything that they wanted to achieve? I reckon there are very few who could stand and, and, and say that. I sometimes think of Barack Obama and, and how... You know, he had ideas and he had plans, but he was constantly thwarted by Congress. An amazing thing that uh, there can be a Democratic president in the United States and uh, a Republican Congress that can make life difficult for him. But I think he would be the first to say that he came to the end of his time as president of the United States and not all of his plans were fulfilled. And again, we place that alongside what we know about God and the plan that he has for the whole universe. We're told that God in, in his love, in his power, is 
working towards a day when everything that has ever devalued life, everything that has ever reduced life to the brutal, to, to, to levels of, of cruelty, everything that is unjust and unkind will be wiped out of human experience and his kingdom will be established forevermore. Now that's God's plan. That's his great manifesto, if I can put it that way. This is where we're going in our history. I was reading just the other day, there are some passages from the book of Revelation. And yes, it is a very puzzling book in, in many ways. But the main thrust of the message is that at the end of all things, Jesus will stand upon the earth and he will be the ruler of the whole of creation. Having cleaned up creation, flushed out everything that has ever made us cry and, uh, and, and has at last restored creation to that perfection that it had at the beginning of all things. So our plans can sometimes falter, they can sometimes nosedive, but God's plan endures forever. We are heading towards a great day of fulfillment. So there we have it. The psalmist, thousands of, of years ago, telling us to be careful where we place our ultimate trust. Yes, to, to pray for those in authority over us, to recognize the good that is possible for them to do. But don't put your whole trust in them. They are men and women like us. They can't save, they don't endure, and ultimately they'll be unfulfilled. Very unlike the God who calls us to trust in him, who can make a difference at the level of our personal lives, who is eternal, who will never burn out, and whose plans in the end will be fulfilled. Let's pray. God, our Father, we give thanks to you for those who are called to political life. And we do pray that you would stay with them in this moment of uncertainty in the nation's life and give them the direction they need to make the right decisions and to aspire to values that, that will sustain us through the worst of times. We remember also, Father, those who are working in our society to care for the vulnerable, those who are addicted, those who are disturbed in some way, those who find it difficult to sustain relationships. We pray for all those who have a calling to support them and to lead them to a better experience of life. We pray also, Father, for your church, wherever she is throughout the world in this moment, I'd ask that you would especially be with those who are under pressure, where governments are oppressive and have made it clear that the gospel is not welcome in their land. We pray for our brothers and sisters. And we remember people we know in this moment to well, perhaps find the night a long experience because they find it difficult to, to sleep, because there are worries about health or the health of a loved one, because there are other disturbances which make the prospect of another day not appealing. So Lord, we, we pray that your spirit will be with all those that we hold in our hearts at this time and pray that you would take us through the week ahead to enable us to know your presence, to take opportunities to show your love to those in need 
and in everything that we say and think and do to be worthy of those who are called to be witnesses for our Lord Jesus. And we pray this in his name. Amen. Thank you.